Got me on ten, got me on ten, got me on ten, got me on ten. Did it again. Hey, people, why are you so bad in 2024? Sorry, I don't understand. Has anyone else noticed just how bad Google Assistant still is in 2024? Like, I feel like it really sucks. Our expectations of AI have gone up a lot, and I feel like they are so powerful in today's world. They can do so much. It kind of seems like Google is just not trying anymore. And if you want an app to replace Google Assistant, you should check out Voice GPT. So that's app number one on today's list. So if you're looking for a chat GPT voice assistant on your phone, look no further. You just need to download this app. There's no login process or anything. Just install it, set it as your assistant. And as soon as you hold the button, hey, chat GPT, can you say hello to my viewers? I'm just filming a YouTube video right now. Of course. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this awesome video. Make sure to stay tuned for some great content. But yeah, it's just so much more powerful and useful than what Google has to offer right now. And I'm sure that's going to change in the future. But for now, yeah, voice GPT is staying on my phone. The next app on my list is called Beeper. A lot of you may have heard about this. There was kind of a dispute with Apple because Beeper brought iMessage to Android without actually needing a, a Mac server in order to send the messages. But yeah, Apple definitely didn't like that too much and quickly put a stop to it. But Beeper is now this amazing all-in-one messaging application. So you can go ahead and log into all of your social media accounts. Could be Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp. There's so much you can do in here. You can even integrate Discord, Slack, LinkedIn, and even X. So if you're looking for a simple way of just getting all of your DMs into one place, this is a great app to check out. There's also a lot of customization in the settings and there's bubble chat support so you can get those like floating bubbles on your home screen so you don't have to go into the app to send the message. You can just kind of multitask. So yeah, it's a great app to check out. It's completely free. Link will be down below. This next one up is a weather app and I know I show off a lot of weather apps, but I just have this thing for always checking the weather probably because I live in a climate where it rains a lot. So I'm always checking for when it's going to be sunny. But the next app up is called Rain, and this is just a beautiful weather app. Like there's so many stunning graphics inside of here, and I love the UI, it's just so clean. And as soon as you jump in, you can immediately see the current weather state at the top. I love how they made the sun have like a little smiley face as well as the clouds. There's also this section here where you can view the sunrise and sunset times. Great for any photographers looking to capture like golden hour. And then below that, you can view a cluster of information such as the visibility, what the temperature actually feels like, your wind, humidity, all that sort of stuff is grouped together right there. There's actually a really nice widget inside of this app as well, which you can put on your home screen. And yeah, just looks stunning. So if you're into the really materialistic, beautifully designed weather applications, this is one to check out for sure. The next app is called iPro, and this is a blue light filter app on steroids like this thing has so many options so you can actually change which color is overlaid onto the screen the exact color temperature and you can also change the intensity the brightness of your display and you can go ahead and play relaxing sounds so if you're in bed and you kind of want to calm down a bit and fall asleep while maybe on your phone then you can play some nice relaxing sounds to help you get to sleep and then at the bottom there's this schedule mode so you can have it automatically turn on or off at a specific time of your choosing and overall, it's just a much more feature packed blue light filter than what you have built in as standard on Android. Number five is called Healthy Battery. Now, this app is so simple. It literally tells you when you should charge and when you shouldn't charge your device. So inside of here, you can customize, you know, the percentages. But as standard, it sends you a notification to plug in your device as soon as you hit 40%. And it also sends you a notification and an alert to unplug once you hit 80%. By keeping your battery life between these levels, it's going to overall optimize the battery health. So there's going to be less degradation over time. The next app up is called Arc. This is a file transfer application. And I'm sure many of you know, I love a good file transfer app just because I use Android, iOS, Mac and Windows, and it can be super hard to transfer files from with outside of your ecosystem. So if I want to send from Android to iOS or Mac to Windows, it can be 
pretty difficult. It completely relies on your local internet connection, so it sends files locally and encrypted, and it doesn't rely on the outside internet. So it doesn't upload to some server somewhere and then download it again. It simply works locally. So it keeps all your files nice and safe. Also it means that they are much faster to transfer. So file transfer speeds are up to 400 megabits per second on your local network. And it's a super simple app to use. You can go ahead and trust devices so that you don't need to accept on the other end and you can just transfer away. I frequently use this application. I'm probably gonna use it after this video just because I'm screen recording on a Pixel and then I wanna add it on my Mac. So a really easy way of transferring it is just to go in this app and transfer that screen recording file to my computer. So really seamless process. Number seven is called Notification Quick Tool Access. So this app allows you to place various widgets into your notification panel. So if we pull down this notification panel, as you can see, I can expand them and I can see all of the widgets up there. So I have a calculator up there. I also have a calendar so I can see live which data is as well as if I have any upcoming events. And if I'm listening to any music on my headphones, I can jump in here and quickly change the equalizer. So if I wanna go ahead and change some of the frequencies, I can do that and live in real time, I can hear the results. But yeah, I find it super useful. I'd probably use like maybe the calculator and the calendar one. Maybe the voice note one. Next up is Action Notch. This app brings quick touch actions to your hole punch cutout at the top of your screen. So you can enable a single touch, double touch, or long hold. And you can assign either an action or you can have it open up an application. So I've got it set right now so when I touch that hole punch, it takes a screenshot. So if I tap at the top, boom, as you can see, it took a screenshot. And then you can also choose to toggle like a flashlight, open your camera app. It could even be like media playback controls. There's honestly a lot of different actions to choose from. I personally feel like the one to toggle different ringer modes is pretty cool because you don't have like a mute toggle switch on Android. So that one's pretty awesome as well as the screenshot and the flashlight. They're the ones that I would frequently use. The next app on the list is called Standby. So this basically copies the standby feature on iOS and brings it to Android. So if you don't know what that is, when your phone is in landscape mode while charging, it displays a clock with various widgets. And they've even copied the exact same clock styles across. So if you're looking for the same look as you get on the iPhone, you can mimic it using this application. But obviously like many things on Android, this has much more customization. So you can make custom clock faces and you can also go ahead and choose your own widget which goes on the side. So I've got this one right here which shows me all my device information. So it shows me my battery temperature as well as my health and the RAM processing going on in my phone as well as the date and time. Really useful. If you just had your phone on your desk while you're working, it's super convenient to see some of this information. And finally, the last app in today's video is called Shelf. So this is made by Sam Beckman, a fellow YouTube creator, fellow top apps creator, gets a slight bit more views than I do. But um, this app is awesome because every single app we cover, like Fakundu from How To Man, as well as myself and Sam, tends to go inside this app. So if you missed out any app series in the past, you can jump inside of here and find some awesome applications that have been discussed on all of our channels throughout the past. Once you open the app, there's this giant list of applications that are ranked and rated by users inside the app. And there's also a secret section. So if you wanna find some useful apps that aren't in the Play Store, you can find them inside of here as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my top 10 Android apps for June of 2024. I have no idea whether I'm gonna film the next months here because I'm going away on the 24th and moving to Toronto. So yeah, I don't know if I'll film it here or there. You'll just have to wait and see because I don't even know myself. Um, but yeah, if you wanna follow my adventure, my journey, definitely do follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting a lot of my story as well as some reels and short form content like packing, things like that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, and remember to subscribe.